What is going on everyone? How's the weather where you are? I hope it's great, just like here in Oregon. Today we're gonna take a look at a state that has every kind of climate, but let's probably tropical. Talk about Colorado. The human history of Colorado extends back more than 14,000 years. The region that is today's state of Colorado was first inhabited by Native American people. You know what? Why do they always say that in history books? And I just did it right there. Whenever they're talking about the U.S. and history of the U.S., they always say that it was first inhabited by Native Americans. It's like, no kidding, who else was going to first inhabit a portion of the United States? Is someone out there doing research and sees this as a revelation these days? It's like, oh my god, I'm studying Utah and it was first inhabited by Native Americans. No kidding. Has anyone ever done some research on, let's say, Green Bay, Wisconsin, and found out it was first inhabited by Jamaicans or something? Anyway, let's assume that the lower 48s were all inhabited by Native Americans from now on. Colorado was first visited by Europeans in 1626, and they even had a little gold rush in the 1850s, and that was the beginning of people migrating en masse to the Centennial State. Not everyone moves to Denver. That's the first thing you gotta know about moving to Colorado. They're not all heading to Denver. They have some amazing amazing towns throughout the state. But like all states, they have some towns that kind of suck. And that's what today's list is all about. Towns that suck in Colorado. So if you're thinking about moving to the Centennial State, Colorado, you should watch my top 10 worst towns in Colorado. Number 10, Fruta, Colorado. Fruta, besides being a horrible name for a town, is the place for you if you're crazy obsessed with dinosaurs and don't mind being without a job or commuting to your job. Grand Junction is the closest bigger city and it's about 20 miles away. That's where most people have to commute to if they like things like money and food and things like that. They don't have many good paying jobs in Fruta. Fruta is home to the Dinosaur Journey Museum where you'll be able to connect with local dinosaur fanatics and view some rare fossils from the prehistoric times. Now. These people dig their dinosaurs, don't get me wrong, but they're not that crazy, like, in Nevada wing nuts that float around Area 51. They just like their dinosaurs and they're proud of what's going on there. Fruta doesn't have the best schools. Area Vibe gives them a big fat F. The poverty level in Fruta is 17% higher than the national average. The good news for Fruta, though, low crime. That seems to be a theme in Colorado. They do have crime in some places, but it's a lot less than in other states. Number 9. Wellington, Colorado. Wellington is a pit stop town along Interstate 25. Wellington doesn't have too much. It has a few schools, churches, a gas station, and that's about all they have in the entertainment department. Anything more, you gotta do a road trip down to Fort Collins. The cost of living is a little high for where it is and what you're getting. The housing isn't great. Schools are graded a D. The biggest issue with this place is it's like a truck stop that people started building houses around. So if you've ever thought about living in a truck stop but you still wanted to live in a house, you're welcome. I found your new home. And don't feel weird about wanting to live in a glorified truck stop. There's almost 10,000 others just like you here. Number 8. Cortez, Colorado. West of Durango is the little town of Cortez. Cortez is not the place you want to live, especially if you have small children or any children. There are about five public schools in this town, all with horrible ratings. At the high school, the average test score is 57% lower than the national average, while only about 80% of the kids actually graduate high school. Cortez is the jumping off point for anyone going to Mesa Verde National Park. This is one I haven't been to, but it's on my national park bucket list. Not to be confused with my normal bucket list that has the words jello or whipped cream on 11 of the 17 entries. Cortez is just a little town for gas, a soda, and a Slim Jim before you go look at Mesa Verde. Everything else in this town is kind of boring, sad, and relatively safe. The place doesn't have a lot of crime, but the weather sucks, the schools suck, and housing isn't that great. Number 7. Trinidad, Colorado. Trinidad is one of the worst places to live in the state. The town is located just east of Trinidad Lake and State Park. The crime rate here is insanely higher than most other small towns in Colorado. It's crazy. Just last month, there were two robberies at the same credit union in the town. There's not a lot of people here. Keep that in mind. On top of this, traffic crimes are such a problem, the police and fire department hosted a crash simulation at the local high school. The overall crime rate here is 144% higher than the national average. I had a beer with with a friend at the Royal Tavern in Trinidad some years back. The place was filled with old men and beards. The guy I was with was French and had a thick accent. When he ordered a drink, they heard his accent and they all started laughing out loud. This wasn't quite snickering. They were in hysterics. I kind of started laughing too. I don't think he's ever forgiven me. 
Number six, Brush, Colorado. Brush is located in eastern Colorado, about an hour outside of Greeley. Brush isn't the best place to live, especially if you need a job. The unemployment rate here is about 7%, and it has a poverty level of about 12.5%. The income per capita in Brush is 33% lower than the national average. This place may have some jobs, but none of them are paying. Paying hardly anything at all, that's what it really seems like. Nearly half the students who attend high school here are able to receive free or reduced lunches. Of the residents who do work, the average income is only about $20,000 a year. That's not a lot of money. 40% lower than the state average. Yeah, it sucks. At least they don't have any crime, but then again, the weather sucks and they got nothing else to do there. So yeah, it sucks. Number five. Craig, Colorado. Craig is a tiny town of about 8,000 residents in northern Colorado, only about 38 miles from the Wyoming border. Since it's so much further north, Craig gets cold. Craig gets really cold. Like an ex-girlfriend who found out you hooked up with her ex-best friend and her cousin and actually one of her co-workers. God, that was rough four days. Anyway, Craig starts getting cold around October. The average daily temperature is in the low 40s and doesn't warm up till May when it finally creeps up to the low 50s. Better stock up on jackets. Craig is a Away from everything. The nearest town that's actually bigger than Craig is Steamboat Springs and that's definitely a great skiing destination. It's definitely not a city. The schools aren't great in Craig. As a matter of fact, out of 1,863 schools in Colorado, the local high school is ranked 1,598th. Number four. Delta, Colorado. Delta is about 40 miles south of Grand Junction with roughly 9,000 residents. Within the town, there are eight schools. There's a preschool, four public schools, and three charter schools. The public schools here, however, have some pretty bad ratings. The schools are graded an F and are way below the state averages and test scores. Shockingly, the graduation rate is 87%, which that's a good number. I don't know how they got that being graded an F, but of the 87%, only 24% will go on to complete a two-year degree and very few go past that. I guess you just start farming or packing up U-Hauls here in Delta. The income per capita in Delta is 25% lower than the national average and the poverty level Delta is 15% higher than the national average. Now the cool thing is they don't have a lot of crime. They got bad weather, bad schools, and you know not really good paying jobs, but it's also just so far away from everything. Delta kind of sucks. Number three, Rifle, Colorado. Rifle is a town right off of Colorado with just under 10,000 residents. Rifle seems to be a touristy stop kind of town with the main attraction being the river. There are five hotel motel things within a quarter mile of the river. That's a lot for a town this size. Not to mention there's like six others scattered throughout the town. My only question is, who the hell's staying here? From what I can tell, the hotel industry runs this whole town. The freaking Amtrak doesn't even stop here. I think it actually speeds up when it gets close to the town. The average income per capita is only 23,000 with an unemployment rate of about 8%, leaving about 14% of the population living in poverty. The schools are graded an F and the cost of living is too high for a place with stats like this. This is another one of those towns that charges you like you're living in a nice place, but you're really not. Number two, Gunnison, Colorado. Gunnison is located in western Colorado, right outside the Gunnison National Forest and the Gunnison River. Gunnison probably isn't the best place for anyone, unless of course you're a college student. Within the town is Western Colorado University, which means it's your typical college town with income per capita being around $17,000, which that's not a lot of spending money for the local economy, if you know what I mean. It's actually 48% lower than the state average. The poverty level in Gunnison is 92% higher than the national average, and yet another town with schools being graded a big fat F in Colorado. Before we get to number one, don't forget there's a poll at the end of the video that helps out with future videos. And number one, Monte Vista, Colorado. And the cherry on top of the Colorado Sunday of despair is Monte Vista. Monte Vista is not the type of place you move to if you care about your safety or your stuff's safety. The overall crime rate in the town is 92% higher than the state average, while the property crime is a lot higher than the violent crime rate. It's still pretty scary. This is kind of an oddity for Colorado. The towns don't normally have much crime. I guess Monte Vista didn't want to be like everyone else. During the last week of March, according to the Monte Vista Journal, there are five DUIs, three arrests for outstanding warrants and multiple reports of shoplifting and theft. I think they're kind of the same thing. But anyway, they got them separate there. 
I don't know. Sure, now, all that's nothing compared to Detroit or something, but this is Colorado. You don't expect that type of thing from there. The poverty level in Monte Vista is 21% higher than the national average. Those aren't good numbers. Their schools are graded F, which obviously sucks. Their weather is graded an F, and their cost of living is the only thing that comes in at A. But as we've learned on these videos, if everything else sucks, cost of living and housing is usually pretty good. Monte Vista is the worst town in Colorado. All right, so that's your top 10 worst towns in Colorado. Hope you guys got some information on Hope you got some entertainment out of it. Don't forget to leave me a comment. Tell me what you thought about the list. Did I miss one? Is there some other town that you think is worse? I'd love to hear about it in the comment section below. Don't forget to give the video a big thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please do so already. And don't forget to hit that little bell right there. That lets you know when I've uploaded a video. The thing about Colorado, it's a great state. These towns aren't that bad compared to other states. It's just this is the list I made and this is what I came up with. It's almost like Wisconsin. It's really hard to find really, really bad towns. Everybody have a great day. Be nice to each other.